Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another uh, video conference interview as part of our Makeshift APA 2020 virtual coverage. I'm Kevin Kunzman, Managing Editor of HCP Live, and uh, today I'm joined internationally by Dr. Karsten Korth, uh, a, a psychiatrist and professor of molecular and neuropathology at uh, the University of Dusseldorf. Uh, Dr. Korth and colleagues recently published a, a viewpoint on blood tests to diagnose schizophrenia and understanding what the uh, limits in psychiatry are in, in terms of uh, developing such assessments. And uh, Dr. Korth is uh, joining us virtually from Germany right now. And do you want to just say hi to everyone before we get going? Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for this interview. I'm uh, ready for your questions. Excellent, excellent. And um, maybe if we could just start off, Dr. Korth, can you can you give us a breakdown of exactly where we stand right now um, for those who may not have read the piece in, in terms of blood testing for uh, schizophrenia and, and what it would look like? So the reason why we wrote this opinion piece in Lancet Psychiatry was that um, basically there is a discrepancy between the uh, advances in neuroscience on the one hand and the kind of stalled biology or biological diagnostics in psychiatry uh, on the other hand. And um, we, was, we were trying to explain how this could happen. And um, obviously there are translational efforts to do some uh, biological testing. And we have, in this paper, we have focused on schizophrenia uh, just to limit uh, the, um, the diagnosis a little bit. And uh, with this example, we basically um, identified uh, three different reasons um, why these efforts um, have not been very successful. And we can, of course, uh, briefly summarize these efforts. These are genetic testing that's very um, broad, basically, very well discussed these days, but uh, without really a, let's say, um, splash, right, in the field. And then there is, of course, proteomic testing, um, which um, has also been advanced, but without also coming to a concrete uh, con conclusion. There is immunological testing. I think the most promising right now is really ant auto autoantibodies um, as a, let's say, a very small subset of diseases with uh, dramatic uh, therapeutic uh, consequences and also, you know, uh, components of the innate immune system. Now, um, what are these factors that we identified that we believe um, impact the translation of fundamental science to clinical science in terms of blood diagnostics, giving the example of schizophrenia first? I think there is still the false idea of homogeneity of the disease. I think um, most psychiatrists would probably disagree and say, well, no, we recognize this heterogeneity. But on the other hand, in most of the studies, this these subsets are not really categorized. So everything is uh, thrown into the same pool of the clinical diagnosis. And that's what we describe as the catch-22 situation. On the one hand, of course, for biological studies, you need to start, have a starting point, which is the clinical diagnosis. On the other hand, you dilute um, strong effects of small subsets when you pool them into the big diagnosis. And I think this holds also true for the genetic tests. I think the heterogeneity prevents us from having strong uh, markers. And the second um, reason was uh, completely different, was professional fears. Um, and there is some literature on that, um, different countries indicating that the substitution of a clinical diagnosis by a blood test can be perceived as a fear of losing basically uh, the uh, value of the interview skills that you, most psychiatrists have been trained at. And the third um, point was a conceptual point that was um, a, a potential um, dualistic attitude of scientists. Now, what is that? Dualism is the idea that mind and matter are basically separated. And now the question is, um, and dualists do not believe that um, matters or, or the mind can be investigated by scientific means. And would that also entail that, um, for example, to some degree, psychiatric diseases cannot be analyzed by um, natural science. And this could be in subtle and tacit, maybe, um, impairment in really uh, believing that these goals of uh, naturalization of um, schizophrenia can be achieved. 
this idea of dualism? What, what yeah. exactly does, where, where does the merit stand for that? What's the evidence for that being the case? How else does that manifest? Well, there are investigations and we cite them in the paper. I mean, um, there is interesting studies uh, that the dualistic attitudes in science, so that is that, you know, I mean, we can still do, of course, fundamental science, but we, on the other hand, we may claim that um, we will not ever be able to substitute an interpretation of the mind by some um, natural scientific laws or insights. I mean, it, the, the problem is very, very much similar to what is done in consciousness research. And in consciousness research, um, there, this uh, dualistic attitude is called the explanatory gap, which means that, um, you know, as we may be as uh, good as we, we may in, in, that, in, in the sciences, but we will never come to cross this explanatory gap from the, let's say, subjectivity um, to the neural correlates of consciousness. And something very similar exists in uh, psychiatry Basically, will we ever be able to explain the mind in, in biological uh, terms? And the question is, if we have doubts on that, is this kind of a negative self-fulfilling prophecy that, that makes us not even try very hard? Yeah, yeah. I was, I was going to say, it does seem like it, it, it does kind of play into its, its own role of um, almost like a defeatist mindset where that we may have about treating mental illnesses and, and just, you know, that there is a limitation to understanding. And it also seems like it manifests in actual diagnostics that happen now. I mean, obviously, you know, schizophrenia might be at the top of the list in, in terms of how many times we see uh, new research showing that it's an overdiagnosed uh, condition because of the multifactorial symptoms that can present. Uh, it's it's something that a lot of psychiatrists may just jump to as as a conclusion without having that concrete evidence behind it. Is 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 that something that you see as as a pressing need and something that we can address in, in terms of improving? Sure. I mean, I would. I think this is uh, something that we should attempt to do, or that, that psychiatry should attempt to do. But um, you know, I think we have also, of course, to distinguish the academic, let's like, say, top-notch science. And there are certainly these ideas to really achieve that. But then there is the uh, huge mass of, let's say, private practicing psychiatrists that who kind of live in a very different world with very different everyday lives and uh, management, um, let's say, emergencies, um, who do not have the time to think and, um, let's say, have these philosophical thoughts. And um, But I believe, yes, um, we should make this effort to change it, uh, to... Um, introduce objectivity into this, uh, these so far purely um, subjective diagnoses. And my, my impression is that uh, many patients have the feeling of, uh, of a verdict if something is not um, really objectified by a you know, positive test. You know, I'm positive for this and this, therefore I have this and this disease. Um, but in, if that doesn't exist, and you know, you have to convince somebody uh, that this disease is there. It can be perceived or wrongly perceived as a verdict. And I think that also, um, you know, counts a little bit for the stigma that is uh, associated with these diseases.